Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, Testing Mini Bytes. I am your friend Amudan Sattivel, and in this video, we are going to learn about Git pull, right? Uh, Git pull is basically involves two process, right? One is fetch and Git merge, right? Uh, we are going to understand this in detail, uh, but for now, you can take a look at this di particular diagram that we have been referencing so far. If you haven't watched the previous videos, I would highly suggest please do watch them before uh, watching this video, right? Good. So now let's say uh, we have dealt with, you know, moving our code from uh, our working copy to the staging area and to the local repository. And we have also uh, pushed our code to the remote repository. But let's say uh, if you are a developer, if, if some of other developers in your team have pushed some latest changes and you want to get those changes into your working copy because, uh, you know, you are relying on some of their code. Okay, maybe you both collaborating together and that's what the purpose of Git. It, it makes collaboration much easier, right? So, so you are dependent on one of your developer's code and he has pushed his changes to the remote. But that particular change is not yet available in your local repository or in your workspace, right? Not available in this white area. So what do you want to do? So there are two things that you can do. You can do a Git fetch, which will fetch all the commits, all the details about the remote branches and everything into your local repository, but it doesn't touch your work, working copy, right? Let's say if you also need the changes to be in your working copies, uh, let's say some of the, you know, you are you might be working on something else, right? So, and then if you do a git pull, uh, it might affect your work. It might change the existing files, right? It might also, uh, you know, introduce merge conflicts. Uh, so in those cases, you can also use git fetch. Git fetch will only, you know, uh, pull the changes to the local repository, whereas git pull command will basically pull it to your workspace. So uh, again, uh, fetching the changes from the local repository to the workspace is called as merge. So you can you can basically say git pull is a combination of fetch and the and the combination of merge. So fetch plus merge is pull. So we are going to understand this in detail. So don't worry if you don't understand any of this. Right. So again, what is a git pull? Git pull is basically done to get the latest changes from remote to the working copy. Right. It's basically a combination of fetch and merge. Right. Let's take an example. So this is a project that we are currently working with. So what I'm doing, uh, you know, instead of creating a new GitHub account, pushing the changes by commit, what I'm going to do is do a quick hack. Let's assume this is a change that is done by your one of the other developers. Right. I am directly doing it in the GitHub UI, right? So you can also write your code here, but you know, writing code in remote is is not recommended because you know you cannot leverage your uh, you know IDEs that that gives a lot of power to your code, right? So this is an example. So I'm just trying to directly commit into the master branch. Uh, you can also create a new branch, but we we haven't understand about branches yet. So you know, let's directly commit this to the master branch. So all you have to understand is somebody else have coded this and you are relying upon this to make your, you know, uh, changes. So you have to fetch these changes. If I go to my uh, stuff, so this is how it is. Uh, let's do, let's make this clean. I did some uh, changes. So let's do a rollback. So all is good now, right? There is no, no changes here, right? Everything is good. If I open this file, this is how it was, right? You have three sections, git init, git commit, and git push. And there is a test section I want to get, right? So how do you do that? So first, the easiest way is basically do a git pull, right? Or you can do a git fetch first. So let's do a git fetch. So notice git fetch is successful. Then this is the command that you used. Uh, you can also see the commands here. But if we are not interested in commands as long as we use IntelliJ, right? So it fetched the code. But if you notice, the test is not yet reflecting in the readme.md, right? because it will only move this to the local repository and not to the working copy. This is my working copy, right? So in order to get that, as I already mentioned, we need to merge those things. So git merge, so this is my master branch in my local repository. So there is new changes coming from origin master, which is my remote, right? If I do a merge now, so if you notice, uh, there is one one new commit that happened, which, which I actually did two minutes ago in my UI, so this test is now getting reflected here. Let's also do uh, one more change. And then let's, this time, uh, let's do a git pull directly, right? So if you go here, 
I want to get the latest changes from the remote. I do a git pull, origin master, and then if I do a pull now, so if you notice, this one, two, three is now reflected. So instead of two step process, git pull uh, is just a one process where it make the changes from your remote to come to your local repository, right? Uh, you can always see the commands that it uses in the show git log console. Uh, you can go and see all these changes here, right? So git pull uh, hyphen hyphen no stat. Again, this is not needed. This is an extra verbose command. You can just use git pull origin master. But again, in, if you are using IntelliJ, you don't have to worry about any of that as long as things are working fine, right? Um, I hope you find this video useful. If you like the video, please do like the uh, video and then share it with your friends. I'll see you guys in another great video. Tada, bye bye.